right, we're back live from the E3 show floor with GameSpot's continuing coverage. I'm your host, Chris Waters, and joining me on stage now, Jim Boone, a guy who doesn't look nearly half as ridiculous as the game he brought to show us, Saints Row 4. Jim, welcome to the stage. Thank you so much. Good to be here. Uh, let me see. Is your Bring the mic a little closer. Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, maybe flip it. Is it on? Let's Did it get see. flipped off? There we go. How's that? Give it one more try. There we go. All right, we're in business. Now we're working. All right, Jim. Saints Row 4, uh, you guys taking out, continuing this this uh, the franchise's beautiful meteoric <laughs> rise to the absurd heights of video gaming uh, yes. because now you're the president of the United States. Isn't that the most logical transition in the world to go you know, from, from just a simple gang member to being president? That's the American way, you know, I think, you right? You consolidate your power base, you build, power begets power, and then boom, you're president. Right. Exactly. Perfectly logical in our yeah. twisted world, of course, only. <laughs> yeah, and speaking of the twisted world, this is not, this, you're not going back in your president and everything with Earth is just fine and operating per usual. Correct. Yes. There's, a, there's like a little bit of alien meddling. There's almost like a Matrix-esque scenario happening. You got it. Yeah, exactly. So uh, so there's a bit of an origin story, and we won't spoil that right now, but as in terms of how you become president, and uh, what we're seeing now is actually you being the president in the White House, and uh, we're going to give you a, you know, a little bit of a chance to see what it's like. Imagine if you actually could be president, what kinds of things would you do, right? Because probably it's not going to be the, the fun things like signing bills into law or anything like that. You have to do it Saint style, oh, right? Man, I would sit in the Oval Office for, for so long and just <laughs> read. Come on. Right. It would be killer. Wouldn't that be the most amazing gameplay of all time? <laughs> no, we decided to mix it up a little bit. So, uh, that's wise. So, yeah, so in the middle of you doing your presidential duties, though, in the White House, which you're seeing here uh -huh. with Vice President Keith One. David here. Keith David, by, who's the actor you guys got to play, Keith David? Keith David. I think that's a great fit. Yeah, sweet. We, we, thought so we thought that he that was a role he was born to play <laughs> and so yeah so you're going to do a few of these duties here but then from there unfortunately the zen invade and that is this Good. evil alien force that you're talking about uh -huh. and so uh what they're doing is they're going around from planet to planet throughout the galaxy and trying to conquer planets and the way that they do it is they abduct everyone and then they put you in this virtual sort of prison and they try to break your will. They're trying to indoctrinate you to make you join the, the Zen. But the problem is, is that they're expecting, like, I'm just going to grab the president and these, these the politicians, right, and bend their, bend their will, not realizing that you're a psychopath, leader of the saints, and, and, and something of a badass. Even the one quarter of the stuff that I did at Saints Row the Third. Are you kidding me? Yeah. And so he ends up having his hands full with the, with the president and the rest of his people. Well, he was just, uh, you know, doing some good deeds. Eliminating cancer, doing, I like that, doing presidential duties. Exactly, right. Here he's gonna, you know, he's dealing with uh, a politician. Now he's got Josh Burke, which is uh, one of the members from Saint Row the Third. And uh, you're gonna see a cameo here from Oleg, and, and uh, yeah. <laughs> oh, I love that dude. Anytime he gets in a car, it just makes me, it just cracks me up. <laughs> exactly. All right. Well, speaking of cars, uh, one of the the things that was really fun in Saints Row the Third was just getting into a crazy array of vehicles, you know, scooping people up in the Catmobile and shooting them out of a cannon, etc., etc. Uh, what are you guys bringing in terms of wacky vehicles this time around? Oh my God, we've got well, we've got a few exotic vehicles. So you know, if we've got an alien inv uh, invasion, we have to have UFOs, of course. Naturally. Yes. And yeah. So so those are what we've had fun with is actually giving the aliens a bunch of uh, a bunch of really exotic uh, vehicles uh -huh. that will also help challenge the player, along with being vehicles that then you can. Just like in the previous Saints Row games, I can get it, I can collect it, and now I can call it whenever I want, and now I can fly in a UFO if I want to. All right. There's all right. also uh, hover tanks that are that are an incredibly powerful sort of uh, vehicle for you to fight against. And uh, what happens is as you start to progress through the game, the aliens become more and more powerful that you fight against, and the vehicles are one of those mechanisms where you know again, this, imagine this giant hover tank that's going around and, and fighting against you. Within Saints Row, it's actually not that hard to imagine. It's, the indeed, giant it's not, tank. right? Exactly. <laughs> yeah, and here you're seeing Zinyak. This is the leader of the Zin, and he's uh, making his grand entrance into the White House. And, uh, Just messing up a press briefing. Right. No you know? consideration at all for Clearly. the American people. It's a very sad thing, but he'll, he'll pay for that. The president will make him pay. Oh, he will pay. <laughs> <laughs> indeed. All right, so we've talked about vehicles. Uh, one of the things that you guys have... Uh, showed off in trailers, much to the delight of many, uh, is also some really goofy weaponry. Uh, I I particularly enjoyed the Inflato Ray, which basically you shoot someone and it just makes their 
body parts swell to comically <laughs> large sizes before they explode. Indeed, yeah. We have a lot of fun with our with our crazy exotic weapons uh, evolution, and uh, yeah, Inflator is a, is a great example of that. Uh huh. And it, then of course, dubstep gun. Uh, yes, that's our that seems to be our fan favorite so far. People people kind of go nuts for that one, and we we've had a lot of fun coming up with that one. That's that's one of those weapons where it literally took an entire team working on that, and everyone. Everyone touched it because it started off with an idea actually back in Saint the Third with our audio director and he came up with this idea of wouldn't it be amazing if we had this weapon that would kill with the power of sound? Uh -huh. And that's that's very intriguing. What, what do we go from there? And what kind of sound has the power to kill humans? <laughs> Dubstep, of course. Of course, right? What else would it be? <laughs> Uh, people are in the Twitch chat fondly reminiscing out of, of Saints Row the Third events, uh, Curtis Axe, jumping out of a plane, opening a parachute, you know, landing on vehicles and, and whatnot. Uh, and actually, I'm just distracted real quick by the converted <laughs> Oval Office, yes. which now just ha is loaded to the teeth it's with style. all sorts of weapons. Uh, <laughs> so those over-the-top action sequences, yeah. you know, obviously the, the open world... Gameplay and, you know, sort of that emergent chaos is a huge part of Saints Row. Uh, but then you've also got those big events. Absolutely, yeah. That's one of the things we've had a lot of fun with in Saints Row 4 as well, is we have a lot of our missions will take place in the virtual world of Steelport, and that's where they're putting the president in to break his mind. But we have a lot of other nightmare realms, so your entire cabinet gets abducted. In fact, you're seeing it right now with Pierce and Ben King getting abducted. And what happens is each of these people are put into their own private nightmares so that their will can be broken. And what the president has to do is he has to go into their nightmare realms, pull them out, bring them back into the real world, which is actually in your crib ship, of course, because now you're in outer space on Zinyak's capital ship. And you're slowly rescuing each of these guys. And so what that does for us, though, is it allows us to create a lot of different variety in terms of these areas, uh, you know, they have their own private nightmares. You have the real world with the alien and you know, the alien forest. It, uh, it, there's, yeah, I think people will be pleased. We've got a lot of pretty exotic locales that are that, along the lines of what we did with Saints Row the Third. Yeah, it's not like you guys were really hurting for an excuse to bring wackiness during Saints Row the Third, but now with the whole the virtual worlds and all the private nightmares is what really intrigues me. I'm just imagining like this Dante esque journey through the inferno of the different tiers of. What's Keith David's private nightmare? What's, you know, uh, Shondi's uh, private nightmare? You know? Yeah, there's, there's some great ones. I think that, that, you know, without spoiling any of it, of course, there's some good fan service there. So, like, so taking someone like Shondi as an example, you know, for those for, for fan, longtime fans of St. Joe, I think they're going to be pleased with what we've done with Shondi's Nightmare. Uh -huh. <clears throat> Excuse me, Shondi's Nightmare Realm. But even something like Keith David, uh, it's gonna, I, that's one I'm, I'm probably more excited about than any other mission for people to see, because to your point, right, it's Keith David. So what what would you possibly do with Keith David? I guarantee for people, that people are going to go nuts with Keith David's uh, Nightmare Realm. It's, it's amazing. I'm getting really excited now about this. Uh, all right, so uh, one of the users whose name I really don't feel comfortable pronouncing uh, from the Twitch chat, yeah, no doubt, is curious about... Uh, Gangs, and you know, obviously the aliens are a huge n a nemesis here. But what kind of other foes are you going to be encountering, and, or entities? Yeah, there's a, actually there's a pretty decent variety, and and the aliens we introduce because it helps provide that you know that really powerful foe. We've given you superpowers, and they're going to need someone that's you know just beyond the standard game member to challenge you. Uh -huh. But what we've done is you know going back to that where I'm talking about the nightmare realms, we've got a lot of gang members that will show up in that. So to, to give you an example of one, Ben King, who is your chief of staff. Uh -huh. He used to be the leader of the Vice Kings all the way back in St. Row 1. And so you're actually going to see some of the Vice Kings make a return appearance that you're going to have to fight against. And so you will see a little bit of the flavor of some of our older gang members as well. Excellent. But definitely the, the, the dominant enemy, though, of course, are the aliens. As we're seeing them get just mowed really down, down really hard by the presidential artillery. You were correct. It is the White House cannon. Because, of course, you know, the president, he needs to have some weaponry. He loves weapons. And so, you, you know... know. It's good to be the king or the Indeed. chief. Oh, come on. Watch yeah. the monument. Can you believe that? It's, so, a, it's totally unacceptable. So in a pro God, aliens. Yeah, but he'll, he'll make them pay. Because in just a moment here, we're going to see the president uh, go mano a mano against Zinyak, the leader of the Zin. President punching aliens. That right. is delightful. Uh, questions are coming in hot and heavy. Uh, Padbot wants to know about uh, any cooperative multiplayer. Yes, everything is totally co-op. It's two-player co-op, drop in, drop out, just like we had in Saints Row 2 and, and 3. Mm -hmm. um, it, it's it's really awesome way to be able to play the game. 
And uh, there, we've actually got a couple of activities that are specifically designed for co-op play. There's there's Death Tag, where you and I can uh, fight against each other. We are both given a random superpower and just have at it. And then there's Cat and Mouse, makes a return appearance, though it's in uh, Saints Row the Third also. But now imagine Cat and Mouse with superpowers. It's 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 amazing. It's, it's so much fun. But yeah, everything is full campaign is co-op play. All right, very cool. Uh, so folks were asking about other modes, uh, like the horde mode from Saints Row the Third. Uh, gave a little taste of different co-op modes. Is horde mode coming back, or is horde that? Horde mode is not coming back. We thought that one was such a quintessential Saints Row the Third one. We had a lot of fun with it, but. Uh -huh. You know, with, the, with these new modes I was just talking about with Death Tag and Cat and Mouse, they, they catered perfectly to our superpowers, and so it gave us a chance to really focus on the superpowers, I think, and, and that was where that's why Horde Mode isn't making a return appearance. Sure, sure. Guys yeah, bringing some new stuff. Exactly. Soliloquize was reflecting that, yeah, I remember when Obama fought the Republicans barehanded. You guys are really <laughs> taken from real life here. Absolutely. <laughs> We're inspired by the politicians of today, of course. And, and that's part of the fantasy of it. That's why we love be you being the president, because who wouldn't want to be a politician, being the leader of the saints as a politician, and going in there and trying to do some damage saint style, right? Yeah. Could try to free up some of the some of the uh, you know the the fun that's going on in Washington these days. Yeah, light lighten it up a little bit, you know, get get things done exactly. with punches and superpowers. Speaking of which, Alien was just kind of like, you know, throwing the president around with mind powers. You got it. Yeah. Am I going to be able to throw people around with mind powers? Of course you are. Yes. Absolutely. Yeah, that we've actually we kind of separate the superpowers the way we talk about it into two different categories. There's the there's the navigation super abilities. So here, for example, you're taking a look at the president. He's on top of one of these giant alien towers. And you can do super jumps. You can glide through the air. It's uh, it, it's just a completely different way to be able to navigate through the world. Wow. Needless to say. That and, president uh, is and flying. You can, yep, you can jump from any height. You can do death from above here, where you can quickly <laughs> hurtle to the ground and do a massive explosion. Uh, so just your ability to be able to navigate through the world is totally amazing. And yeah, here you're seeing you being able to Yay. use telekinesis with the power of your mind, you can pick up vehicles, you can pick up people, fling them around wherever you want. It's uh, it's a ton of fun. I can't tell you how many hours that it, at the GameSpot offices we just sat around walking down by the river and just throwing people over <laughs> into the river and trying to like bounce them off the, the guardrail, just like delighting in that, that physics model and that just goofiness. Yep. Uh, there's so much emergent stuff. And you know, one of the things yeah. we fi I find people do with telekinesis is you can grab, you can grab a person and aim way up in the air, you'll launch them. And one of the things that's fun is to see if you can use your super sprint to catch up as quickly as possible to the person that you just flung, you know, hundreds of meters in the, into the distance. It's, it's awesome. <laughs> I smell an achievement in the works. <laughs> catch the guy you threw sky high. Yes. Uh, people are curious, Lustiker, about um, the, the sort of the size of these open world areas. You've talked, you know, about many different worlds that you'll sort of go through with these nightmares and the, sure. the virtual steel port, which we see here. Uh, you know, in terms of size of the world, I mean, is it comparable to the third? Or? Exactly, yeah. So the open world is very comparable to the same size. What we've done with Steelport here is, is we've, we've tended to build upwards, if that makes sense. So we have a lot well, of these I mean, alien towers. and draw, jump, jump off an alien tower that was like two miles high or something <laughs> you, crazy. You got it, exactly, right? And so now because you have all these abilities to let you move upward, we've had a lot of fun building these areas and doing a lot more with our rooftops. So now the aliens, there are actually super-powered aliens that will be able to chase you to the rooftops. Mm -hmm. And portals will spawn up there, so so that stuff is, is is fantastic. But then these nightmare realms we've been talking about, those are more mission size. So yeah. so those are not new uh, open world areas for you to enjoy. Uh -huh. They're definitely you know they're they're built for you to be able to go in there, have fun with it, and then come back out to the open world here. Yeah, see, and uh, judging from what I kind of imagine you guys are going with, it's going to be a very you know surreal, humorous you know kind of experience, and then you know then then back to the the emergent mayhem of virtual steel port. You've got it. That's exactly right. Yeah, we've had, you know, classic Saints Row, we always have fun with it, and uh, I think people are going to really enjoy the humor in this one, because we've had a lot of jokes at, uh, at various people's expense. We do a lot of pop, pop culture references, and, uh, you know, it's all in good fun. We're huge fans of a lot of the people that are out there, but it's a, it's a fun way to be able to just add some humor to the game. Yeah, and certainly... <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, the uh, goofy takedowns still in full effect. Very much so, yeah. Except they're, they're, you know, now they're super powered. So when you're in this virtual sort of environment, you can do some of these takedowns, and they're pretty amazing. Or we have offensive superpowers here, like you're seeing with Buff. This is one where you can set the player on fire, 
and anyone that is nearby is also going to be consumed in flame. And all of your rounds that you fire off are incendiary rounds also, so any enemy that you shoot, they're also going to get caught on fire. And we saw some freezing earlier, I yes, believe. exactly, and that is blast. So that one, you can freeze people solid. And all of the superpowers are also be, are able to be used in conjunction with each other. So they each have their own recharge timer. So what I can do is I can take, I can take the blast, I can freeze a bunch of people, and then I can quickly pop over to uh, Stomp, which does this concussive blast, which will then shatter everyone. It's almost like the person playing is listening to us right <laughs> now. Indeed, is it not? <laughs> exactly. Uh, what is this Super Soaker? What does that Super Soaker do? Because that I think I had that version, except yes. it didn't shoot green lasers. It, indeed, it did not. Yes, yeah, so this is one of our fun ways that we've extended customization in the Saint Row 4. So customization has always been a huge part of all the Saint Row games, going all the way back to Saint Row 1. Mm -hmm. And and we've brought back that same level of customization with Saint Row 4. So in fact, you'll be able to take your character Character that you created in Saints Row the Third and bring him and import him into Saints Row Four, which is great. And is crazy and, zombie mush mouth talking? I, no, we've got a <laughs> we we have a different one. We've not revealed it yet, but I think fans are going to enjoy enjoy this one. So all right, all right. But uh, but, but you guys have done auto tune talk and zombie <laughs> talk. We have yes. Yeah, well, right. I think that if you are a hardcore gamer. I guarantee you're going to love this one. All right. That, that's about as far as I can go. Okay. But with the weapons, right? So, so you saw the Super Soaker there. Yeah. What you can do now is you can customize the appearance of your weapons. So we have what we call weapon costumes. Uh -huh. So it'll take a machine gun and turn it into a big giant squirt gun, or you can take a rocket launcher and turn it into a guitar case. And then we have a ton of different skins that you can do on top of that. So you can make it gold plated, or you can get it blood soaked, or all kinds of stuff. We have oh, over 200 different items for the various weapons that you'll be able to do to customize the look of your weapon. But it will still function exactly the same. It just makes it look that much more exotic for your character. Sure, sure. All right, Jim, we're running low on time, but I want to get some rapid fire questions here real quick. You got it. Uh, can you even do? A, do you even need to, you don't need really need to drive cars anymore, but you can. You're exactly right. You can customize, you can drive whatever you want, but superpower is the way to go. Can you play as an alien at any point? Uh, you you have an outfit that is alien inspired, but not as an alien. All right, and uh, people are curious about characters like Johnny Gat, Mr. Genki, all these sort of Saints Row goofballs. I can confirm that Mr. Genki is back. Professor Genki is there. Uh, Gat. You know, he, he died in Saints Row 3. So. Oh, Johnny Gat. <laughs> but anything's possible in a Nightmare Realm. All right, uh, Saints know. Row 4. Uh, Jim, when is this game coming out? When can people delve into the utter superpowered absurdity? Saints Row 4 is going to be out August 20th, so it's right around the corner. Right around the corner, and on what platforms? It'll be PlayStation 3, Xbox 360, and PC. All right, thank you so much for coming. Thank that was a real much. pleasure. It's our pleasure to be here. Saints Row, always a really fun game to talk about, folks. We're just saying... A quick break now, and we'll be back with more live demos here from GameSpot Stage 1 at E3 2013. Hey, folks, I'm 